Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be making a simple stacked boutique bow with this cute bride of Frankenstein ribbon. I just happened to pull it out. I received it last year and I believe I posted a ribbon haul. I'll leave a link down below if you want to check it out and uh, see if you can score some of this ribbon for yourself. Anyways, it is super cute. There's a lot of gray going on with some black and some green and a little bit of white. So I did pull together all of these awesome ribbons and we're going to go ahead and make a hair bow today. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about some of my favorite supplies when it comes to working with hair bows. Of course, everyone's going to need your scissors. You need to cut things. You're also going to need a lighter. My personal preference is the long-handled grill lighters. You can use the short ones. Totally up to you. I also work with crochet thread, but whatever is best for you. Um, I'm going to be using my Stiff and Quick. This is what I prefer to use when it comes to making my ribbon stiff. Uh, again, you can use hairspray or you can use starch. Of course, I've got an extra ruler in case I need to measure anything. You'll need your ribbon. That's the main thing. You need ribbon. I've also got a piece of cardboard with a little push pin that's going to help me with my spikes. My glue gun is heating, ready to go, and the only other thing that I need is a barrette. Barrette of your choice, which mine is going to be a French barrette. Okay, I'm going to be changing things up just a little bit. Usually when I'm making my boutique stacked bows, I start with the bottom, which would be the base bow. But today I'm going to be starting with the very top, which is going to be a twisted boutique bow. I am going to be using this all charged up print. This is going to be like the focal point of the bow. And I've got 26 inches of it. And because it is only printed on one side, I'm also going to be layering another piece of ribbon underneath or on the opposite side. So it will be like this. Just put the two together where you're going to have one print on one side and the other on the opposite side. All right, so I've got two pieces of 26 inch ribbon and this is a 7 8 inch with ribbon. All right, so I've got two pieces. I'm just going to line them up back to back and we will make a twisted boutique bow. All right, you can fuse the two ribbons together with a little bit of fabric fusion or heat and bond, but I'm just going to wing it and as long as nothing is bubbling up and shifting, I should be good. I'm going to be doing just the hand folded twisted boutique bow method. I'm going to leave links down below in the descriptions bar if you want to check out previous tutorials or if I happen to be going just a little bit fast, um, I'll always have links down below. Most of these techniques I have already done videos for so no problems if I'm going too fast. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and start folding my twisted boutique bow. I'm going to go ahead and get my four loops. There's the first one. All right, there is the second. You want to make sure everything is lining up. Just give it a little look. All right, let's go ahead and make the third and fourth loop. We're just going to tuck these under. And my very last loop, there it is. We're going to twist it. All right, see there is my four loops. Now I'm going to turn it because that's what I always do. I want my tail on the bottom and there is my tail. All right, so now is where you give it a look, play with your ribbons, make sure everything is even and that didn't look even. Now it looks even. All right, so I'm gonna come up here and I'm just going to crease right down the center and then you'll want to secure it with your thread, of course, and then we will spray it with a little bit of stiff and quick and move on to the next bow part. Okay guys, remember not every bow that you fold is going to come out perfect every single time. It's not even going to come out perfect 75% of the time. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to do some little trickery on your bows. This one 
is giving me a little bit of a hassle because of the print and you will notice that a lot of prints are harder to fold than just your regular solid colors all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get out my alligator clips and i'm just going to clip i'm going to come down here and just twist if i need to clip on the other side i'm just going to press down i am going to shape it how I want it to be. I'm gonna make sure everything is even with each other. And then I'm gonna spray it. And once you spray it, then you can tug on it a little bit more. But these clips are my lifesavers. I can attach those and make them hold something. If something is just out of whack, I can make it perfect again. Alright, so I'm just going to work with this a little bit, like I said, and spray it. And then once it dries, you can take out your clips and your bow will be somewhat perfect. Okay, the next part that I'm going to be working with is the spikes and I clipped 12 pieces of ribbon. Each piece measures 7 inches in length and um, I might not use 12, but it's better to have too many spikes than not enough. And I did realize on my last bow that I made, I think I only used 8 spikes when I should have used 10. So I might just use 10. Or I might use all 12. Who knows? Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to heat seal all of my ends first of all. Then I'm going to form my spikes. I'm going to be using my handy dandy piece of cardboard and my little stick pin to help me. Um, so yeah, I'm going to form the spikes and then I am going to actually spray my spikes before I trim the ends. Does that make sense? Probably not. Just go with me. All right, go ahead and complete your spikes. Okay, look at these beautifully fanned spikes. Okay, so you're probably asking, why on earth did you go ahead and heat seal? Well, because I'm gonna spray these and I don't want anything fraying. And then after it dries, then I'm going to come along with my scissors and I'm going to trim up the ends how I see fit. And the reason why I do that is because I find that when you clip your spikes after they have been sprayed and they are a little bit crunchy, that it's so much easier, especially if you're working with prints, to trim them and then reheat seal them because working with prints, you guys, is a pain quite often, especially when you're trying to trim the little delicate areas. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and spray these, spray it. And then I'm also going to secure it in the middle. Make sure everything is good and secure with my thread. Then I'm going to allow it to dry and then we will come back and we will trim up the ends. If you're still having a little bit of trouble with your spikes, don't forget you can always add a little bit of glue and stick those babies down together. They'll be good and even then. All right, so now all I've got to do is spray my spikes allow them to dry and then we can go on to the next bow part okay next part of the bow is going to be a surround a bow and i wasn't sure i was going to make this part at first but i'm going to go ahead and make it all right so i'm using 7 8 inch ribbon i'm i've got this cute bride of frankenstein print and this has actually got her head all over it um, i've clipped two pieces each piece measures 15 inches in length and I'm not actually going to be putting the surround bow together. Let me show you what I'm going to do. All right, let me find the center of my ribbon. Just like always, I'm going to come up here 
and I'm going to glue the ribbon in right there at the top just like any normal surround bow. You'll want to do this on the right side and then fold it over and do the left side. But you want to put the ribbon edge right at the top. Two surrounded bow parts are complete. Go ahead and spray it with your stiff and quick or your starch or your hairspray and get it nice and crunchy. Put it to the side. We're gonna work on this when we put everything together. Trust me, I've got a plan for this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make some cute little side bows and these are just going to be simple tuxedo bows with tails. Um, I've clipped off about five inches of this black and gray zebra print and then I've got about four inches of the green. I'm just going to come, of course you want to heat seal both ends. We're going to form little circles and press them down in the middle and then we're just going to crease to create a cute and simple little tuxedo bow. And there it is. Of course, you'll want to secure it with thread. Now, I want these bows to measure about two inches in width. So, again, just take it, wrap it around, push down the middle, and I'm going to flip it and crease it. Just one little simple crease in the middle and secure it with thread. And then we will add the tails. Now for the tails, I'm going to take this green, I'm going to fold it in half to find the center, and then once I find the center, I'm going to go ahead and crease it. I'm going to take my little tuxedo bow, I'm going to attach the tails to the middle, and then I'm going to secure the two with my thread. And then you will want to wrap the two with a piece of 3 8 inch ribbon. Cute little side bows are complete. I did attach a piece of 3 8 inch black ribbon to the center. Um, and I did not forget to make a base bow. I am going to be using a simple pinwheel today, but instead of four loops, I went ahead and did six loops. And it is measuring four inches in length. I did use my handy dandy template for that. Um, again, it's just a small, simple six loop pinwheel made with one and a half inch ribbon and this is the green that matches this green right here. All right but um, after everything dries we will put it together and have one cute bride of Frankenstein hair bow. Okay my spikes are completely dry and pretty stiff right now and like I said I went ahead and sprayed my spikes and then I trimmed everything down in size. It just makes the cutting process so much easier. Okay and as you can see I have got just about all of the ends trimmed up. I did leave these because I was going to share with you again how I trim them. We're just going to take and fold the spike in half right there at the end. Make sure it's even with each other. And then you're just going to take your scissors and give it a snip. And you've got your spikes. And you want to do that and make sure every one of them is pretty even with the other. And then after you get done, just take your lighter and you heat seal. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish the spikes up and then we can start the layering process of putting this bow together. Spikes are complete. Looking pretty spiffy. All right, now we are going to move on to the surround bows. And remember I told you not to put your surround bows together just yet because we were gonna do something a little bit different. All right, so this is the back of my Twisted Boutique bow and as you can see, I have went ahead and glued one of my surround bow parts to the back. And the reason I'm doing this is, remember sometimes 
everything gets a little bit tricky and your loops don't want to cooperate, well, this is going to help just a little bit. All right, so you just take your surround bow parts and instead of putting them together and then just layering your Twisted Boutique on top, we're just going to leave them in two parts and then we're going to come and we are going to glue them to the back of your bow and you'll just turn your bow over and kind of measure everything of where you want your loops to hit and I think that's what I'm going for right there. And then I'm just going to turn it over and we're going to glue underneath and these will be even and everything will measure up like you want it. It's all about the trickery. Trickery. All right, so I'm going to just go ahead and I think that's what I'm going for right there. I'm going to glue this down to the back. Of course, I'm going to make sure it's even. See, just glue it on top of the other and then flip it over and your surround bow will be lined up with your Twisted Boutique bow. And here is how the back of my bow is looking. Surround a bow on the back and then of course my Twisted Boutique right there in the middle. And I like it. And if you want to, you can go ahead and um, spray it again, all your loops together if it's not crunchy enough or stiff enough for you. I've got my six loop pinwheel, which is going to serve as the base. I'm gonna put just a dab of glue right here in the center. Just a dab will do ya. Ugh, I hate strings. All right, and then I'm gonna put my spikes in the center right there. And then on top of the spikes will be our surround bow followed by the Twisted Boutique bow. That's gonna go right there. So we're just going to glue it down. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my crochet thread here and I'm going to secure everything together. And then we will add our cute little side bows. All right, we are almost completely finished with the bow. I do have to add the cute little side bows and I'm also going to be adding something to the center. I'm thinking a bottle cap. I've got this adorable cameo. It is a haunted house. It's got a little glitter on it. I think I'm going to put my green bottle cap in the center and then add the image and then we will secure it right here in the center of the bow. But I'm still working on that. I haven't decided on the final product. Of course, your side bows are going to be glued right here to the side, one on each side. But first, first let me show you the back of the bow because I know a lot of you ask to see the backs of my bows. Now you want to make sure the back of your bow is just as pretty as the front of your bow. You want to make sure there's no glue strings just hanging around. You want to make sure everything is heat sealed back here. You don't want nothing unraveling on you. I put this on a French barrette. This is actually a smaller barrette than I prefer to work with, but you know what, I'm going with what I have. There's a little bit of glue that needs to come off. But yeah, there is the back of the bow. And here is the front. Everything has been secured with glue, thread, and a little extra ribbon. All right, before we add these cute little side bows, I'm going to share with you a little trick. Do you see how my spikes ended up with that gap after I put them in the center of my bow and I secured everything down? Well, get you some of these felt circles. These are like, I don't know, like an inch. And um, they're awesome for just about anything. But let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come to the back of this bow. I'm going to gently push my spike pieces together. I'm gonna hold them with my thumb. You wanna make sure they line up down here. Add a little bit of glue to this little felt piece and attach it right there on the back. And then your spikes, of course they're not glued down, but you get the point. They will be in the middle again. A little trickery. More trickery to this bow making process. Just 
these little felt circles. Believe me, they are a lifesaver. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that to the top and the bottom. So what you just wanna do, push together, make sure everything lines up, and then add glue and your felt piece, and you're not going to be able to see the felt piece on the other side. Okay, Bride of Frankenstein bow is 100% complete. Actually, I might be telling a little bit of a fib. Um, I did use that uh, Haunted Castle cameo right there in the center, but I'm not 100 that I'm going to keep it there because it blends in with the ribbon. It's just too dark for this ribbon, and I could not find a proper image or one that I liked. So I did clip one of these Bride of Frankenstein images and glued it right there in the center. But again, I'm not 100% that I'm going to keep that in the middle, but the great part of being a bow maker is you can take everything apart if you don't like it. All right, but that is it. The side bows have been added. And we are completely finished with bow number two for the Halloween season. And this, again, is a simple stacked bow, meaning we have a base, we have spikes, we have a surrounded bow, and we have a topper. And then, of course, these little side bows. But that is it. We did not add any fluff and stuff to this bow. And if you followed the measurements, that I gave you. This bow measures right at six inches, six inches in width. Yep, see, six inches. All right, so that's going to wrap it up. I will see you guys in the next video.